Has science gone too far? When is enough enough? Today, you are going to question everything as we count down some of the riskiest science experiments in history that could have ended the world. Starting off this countdown, we have the oil eating superbugs. Wouldn't it be great if there was a bug out there that could go around eating oil? That way they could easily clean up oil spills and help clean our planet. Well, that's exactly the idea that General Electric scientists had in the mid 1970s. They introduced a plasmid that allowed a bacteria to digest petroleum. But thankfully, people realized how dangerous this would be. This engineered bacteria could start consuming everything in its path and then outcompete other bacteria and organisms, and then destroy the balance on Earth. So I'm glad that they didn't follow through with this one. In our ninth spot, we have Project Artichoke. This is one of the many unethical experiments conducted by the CIA. This one took place in the 1950s as the CIA wanted to see if they could take complete control of a person so that they could do their biddings for them against their own will. Project Artichoke used hypnosis, forced morphine addiction, drug withdrawal, and the use of chemicals to try and cause amnesia in the test subjects. Thankfully, this project was shut down in the mid-1960s. Imagine if they did find a way to gain complete control over humans. Imagine what sick stuff they could make us do. They could turn us into cold-blooded killing machines. In our eighth spot, we have the radiation tests. Back in 1954, the US conducted a number of radiation tests on humans. They called this Project 4.1. It all started with Project Castle Bravo. This was a series of high-yield thermonuclear weapon tests that took place on Bikini a toll in the Marshall Islands. Little did they know that the yield of radiation was going to be much larger than they anticipated. This left a number of residents injured. So they created a secret study to, and I quote, evaluate the severity of radiation injury to those accidentally exposed. Now, some say that the exposure to the radiation was accidental, that they didn't really mean for it to happen. Others believe that this was part of their plan all along. And obviously, nuclear testings are bad for a number of reasons. The effects this experiment had on the exposed individuals were nasty. In our seventh spot, we have weaponizing the plague. In the late 1980s, the Soviet Union thought it was a good idea to use the plague as a weapon. Keep in mind, when the plague was around, it killed half of Europe's population. During the 13th and 14th centuries, the amount of people in the world dropped by 100 million people because of this. But they ignored all that and decided that it was a good idea to launch the plague at enemies in missile warheads. But it wasn't just the plague. They had hundreds of tons of anthrax and smallpox as well. How great is that? All we need is for countries to start a biological warfare. The population would be wiped out so fast. Coming in at number six, we have the infected mosquitoes. From 1956 to 1957, the United States Army conducted a number of biological warfare experiments on unexpecting residents of Savannah, Georgia and Avon Park, Florida. One of these experiments involved releasing millions of infected mosquitoes into the cities. They wanted to see if the mosquitoes could spread yellow fever and dengue fever. The mosquitoes were infected with these. Turns out that they could, and the results were shocking. Some experienced respiratory problems, others got encephalitis and typhoid. Some even gave birth to stillborn babies. As for the public, well, a number of individuals got sick from these mosquitoes and several people died as a result. Imagine if these tests were still up and running today and a country was able to weaponize mosquitoes and other insects. That would be very disastrous. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the human experimentation. Over the years, the Soviet Union has performed a number of unethical tests on humans, including testing a number of poisonous gases on them. So beginning in 1921, the Soviet Union created a number of poison laboratories. They called them Laboratory 1, Laboratory 12, and Camera. In these laboratories, the unthinkable would happen. They wanted to find a tasteless, odorless chemical that could kill someone, but not be detected in their autopsies. So they tested a number of poisons on people, including mustard gas, ricin, digitoxin, and curare. They were given these poisons in their food or drinks, or they would take it straight up thinking that it was medication. 
Hundreds of test subjects died as a result. And it's scary why the Soviets wanted to do these experiments in the first place. Basically, they wanted a way to kill people without people knowing it was them doing so. If a person dies from a poison and it's not detected post-mortem, then they could get away with it. So who knows how many people they killed outside of these experiments. And apparently the labs were reactivated in the late 1990s. So who knows what they're working on now? Moving on to number four, we have North Korea. North Korea is highly secretive, so it's hard to know exactly what they're working on over there. But apparently they are running a number of experiments on their prisoners. Rumor has it that each month, a black van known as The Crow goes around collecting 40 to 50 people. These people then get taken to an unknown location for experiments. Some prisoners are tortured, others are starved, others are suffocated to death with gas. It's said that in one experiment, 50 women died within 20 minutes after eating poisoned cabbage leaves. The purpose of these experiments are unknown, but we know that North Korea has something up their sleeve. Coming in at number three, we have Starfish Prime. Starfish Prime is the name of a series of tests that began in 1962. Basically, it involved the detonation of a nuclear weapon outside of Earth's magnetic field. That sounds like a terrible idea, am I right? But it wasn't just one nuclear weapon. They detonated six nuclear weapons. Luckily, our magnetic field didn't get destroyed. It just snapped back into place, as they said. But if it was permanently altered, that's bad. We would have lost protection from cosmic rays and solar winds. Not only that, but we would have experienced massive earthquakes as the continents moved around. In our second spot, we have SETI, or S-E-T-I, which stands for the Search of Extraterrestrial Intelligence. This is a program that has been trying to find alien life out in our solar system for more than five decades. But here's the thing. A number of people are worried about this program. They are sending out signals telling other life where we are, meaning if there is anything else out there, we are opening ourselves out for contact. And if they have sinister intentions, they could come and wipe out our entire planet. Like we're just assuming that aliens are friendly and won't want to take control of Earth. If advanced civilizations do exist in the galaxy, who says they don't have the power to come here and kill us all? Hey. Maybe they've been preparing for this for the past five decades, who knows? And in our number one spot today, we have Magnaporth Gria. This is a fungus that can leave nasty lesions on plants and cause huge damage to crops. In fact, it can release thousands of spores and contaminate acres of crops in a single night. Well, during the Cold War, the US did experiments using this fungus. They tried to weaponize it in a form of a spray or a bomb. Now, this was very dangerous. Because of how fast this fungus spreads, it could cause uncontrollable damage to the world's most important crops, leading to worldwide famine. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. Let me know in the comments below which one of these experiments creeped you out the most. And now, speaking of comments, let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from the video, top 10 bizarre coincidences in history no one can explain. And this was the marathon video, which you guys really liked. Mrs. Big Tex commented, my mom gave birth to me March 11th when she was 27. I gave birth to my daughter March 11th as I was turning 28. Whoa, okay. That's a little freaky. That's actually really freaky. Like what are the odds? Unless you plan it. I'm not thinking about that. That's weird. Blunty Monkey commented, wow, that plain joke flew over my head. Pun intended. I love puns. So that was great. That was actually, that was great. Um, comment your best pun in the comments below. Maybe I'll shout it out in the next comment shout out portion. So do it. Do it right now. And Hotluck666 commented, Lindsay's the best thing this channel has created. We love you, girl. Uh, love you too. It's just funny how you said created. It's like they created me. It's like I'm my own person. It just seems like I was in a lab. They're like, now let's create a new house. Lindsay, pop. Yeah, anyways, uh, thank you, appreciate it. All right guys, that's all the comments I'm shouting out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see ya. Bye. Some experiment, no, no. Some researcher, no, some experienced. United States Army conducted a number of biological warfare expen-
coming in our mm, mm, coming in at 